When a piece of metal debris that fell onto an Indian farm field sparked a flurry of interest among military experts from multiple countries who rushed to the New Delhi laboratory, China's military-industrial complex was quietly lifting the veil on its technological iron curtain. Flashback to the night sky of May 7, 2025, along the Kashmir border, a Pakistani J-10CE fighter jet pressed the launch button, sending a PL-15E air-to-air missile tearing through the clouds to precisely penetrate an Indian Air Force Rafale fighter jet 181 kilometers away. This air battle, codenamed Vermilion Operation, shocked the world with a 6-to-0 kill ratio, and the missile debris fell into Indian territory, instantly becoming the holy grail of the global defense industry. These fragments scattered across farmland, with the largest piece smaller than a microwave oven, spread over an area of 5 square kilometers. The critical components were completely destroyed by the self-destruct mechanism. The guidance head was blown into a honeycomb structure by aluminum borate explosives. The gallium nitride chips melted into metal blocks, and the missile body coating bore the Lankiao Group Logistics Code, the logo of a Chinese port operator, which even led Japanese experts to mistakenly believe it was a takeout insulated box. The Indian military initially claimed to have successfully jammed the PL 15E, but its stance shifted dramatically after the debris was recovered. The inability to analyze the fragments forced New Delhi to seek assistance from Japan. Tokyo's urgency stemmed from pressure in the East China Sea. Whenever China's J-20 fighter jets conducted patrols with their own version of the PL-15, Japan's F-15J radars frequently malfunctioned, and the domestically produced AM-4B missile's 150-kilometer range fell short of 70% of the PL-15E's actual combat data. However, when Japanese technical teams arrived in India with state-of-the-art equipment, they encountered unprecedented technical barriers. Physically, the PL-15E's radar frequency band is deliberately restricted, and its ESA guidance system uses gallium nitride T, are components that require analysis with a 100,000x electron microscope, far exceeding the 30,000x limit of Japanese equipment. From a materials perspective, the missile's body coating contains a special formula with 21 rare earth elements, and even Japanese JAXA materials experts admitted that replicating it would require a decade to rebuild the supply chain. The final report published by Japan's Sankey Shimbun had to acknowledge the three groundbreaking capabilities demonstrated by the PL-15E. First is the reverse understatement of its range. While the official export specifications listed as 145 kilometers, its actual combat performance reaches 181-200 kilometers, setting a world record for the farthest distance a missile has downed a fighter jet in aerial combat history. The core secret lies in its groundbreaking dual-pulse solid rocket motor design. It divides the propellant into two sections, front and rear, akin to infusing the missile with two powerful bursts of energy. The first pulse ignition provides the missile with rapid initial acceleration, propelling it directly toward the target. The midsection relies on inertia for efficient gliding, maximizing energy conservation. As it approaches the target in the final segment, the second pulse ignites again not only restoring high speed, but also imparting lethal terminal maneuverability. This, one thrust, one glide, then another thrust, design allows the PL-15E to maintain ample kinetic energy and agility even when attacking targets at extreme ranges, significantly expanding the enemy aircraft's no-escape zone. Its energy management efficiency even outperforms the ramjet engine of Europe's Meteor missile. What truly impresses Japanese experts is its ability to penetrate the electromagnetic fog of a complex battlefield with remarkable accuracy and resilience. In actual combat, Indian Air Force aircraft frantically deployed infrared countermeasures, chaff clouds, and electronic jamming to confuse incoming missiles. But the PL-15E's active electronically scanned array radar seeker head is like having fire-eyed vision. AESA radar beams are highly flexible, scan at extremely high speeds, and inherently possess strong anti-jamming capabilities. This enables the PL-15E's seeker to penetrate layers of interference, accurately distinguishing between the high-speed maneuvering fighter jet itself and deceptive decoys. Combined with an inertial navigation system with exceptional anti-jamming capabilities and a potential infrared terminal seeker forming a dual-mode guidance system, the PL-15E's ability to firmly lock onto real targets becomes a decisive factor in battlefield victory. The radar data recorder of India's Su-30MKI ruthlessly confirms this. Out of 37 instances where it was locked onto by the PL-15E, 28 evasion attempts failed, and traditional jamming methods were virtually ineffective. Behind this lies the power of systematic combat operations, 
The Pakistani Air Force leverages the ZDK-03 early warning aircraft and the Data Link-17 data link to establish a lethal closed-loop system of detect lock kill. After the J-10C launched a missile at an altitude of 15,000 meters, the early warning aircraft took over for relay guidance, keeping the Indian Rafale firmly trapped within an escape-proof zone, with no place to flee. Ironically, the PL-15E, which has exhausted the efforts of experts from multiple countries through repeated studies, is actually the culmination of Chinese military technology from a decade ago. While Japanese teams were poring over charred missile fragments and melted chips in laboratories, China's air-to-air -air missile family had already undergone several generations of technological leaps. At air bases in the Eastern Theater Command, the PL-16, optimized in size and with a range potentially exceeding 300 kilometers, is already primed for deployment in the internal weapon bays of stealth fighters like the J-20 and J-35. It is highly likely equipped with a more advanced variable thrust solid rocket engine, enabling it to intelligently adjust output throughout flight to maintain peak energy levels at the final kill moment, with an escape zone broader than that of the PL-15E. The PL-17, with its slimmer profile and designed specifically for targeting high-value targets, is estimated to have a range exceeding an astonishing 500 kilometers. It hangs like the Sword of Damocles over enemy early warning aircraft and refueling aircraft, granting the Chinese Air Force the ability to launch a fatal strike from beyond ultra-long ranges, completely rewriting the rules of aerial combat. When the PL-17 operates in conjunction with the new generation KJ-3000 early warning aircraft, which has a detection radius of 2,000 kilometers, achieving zero-second data synchronization. The long-range precision strike system they form is sufficient to deter a broader strategic space. As for the more mysterious PL-21, it represents the cutting edge of China's exploration in air combat weaponry. Japanese experts' dissection of the PL-15E wreckage and their final report filled with bitter astonishment, inadvertently became the best footnote to China's rise in defense technology. This costly yet fruitless reverse engineering effort was fundamentally defeated by the dimensional superiority of systemic warfare over single weapon research. The true value of the pl 15 lies not in the missile itself, but in the invisible killing cloud network woven by the early warning aircraft, high-speed data links, and reconnaissance satellites behind it. While the Japanese team was still struggling to reverse engineer the material ratios of a missile from a decade ago, China's defense industry had already set its sights and steps toward the future dimensions of air combat systems. The trajectory of the thunderbolt slicing through the sky is a silent declaration of a great power's transition from technological self-reliance to strategic confidence. When the missile bay of the J-20 quietly opens under the night sky of the East China Sea, and the sharp edge of the new generation of missiles begins to emerge, the world witnesses not only the unveiling of cutting-edge weapons, but also the mighty will of a nation to rely on its own strength and courageously climb to the pinnacle of scientific and technological innovation. Those charred fragments scattered across foreign lands are not only tombstones of past glory, but also boundary markers of future territories, silently proclaiming that a new era of China's aerospace power has already arrived.